Hey guys, it's Chris. How you doing? Um, I want to do a video about hearing from God and all the foolishness that's going on with this good old I hear from God statement that you hear all the time and I didn't hear that from God, I heard that from God, you know. Um, bottom line, if you are not bearing good fruit, you don't hear from God. You can't sit there and bear no good fruit and claim that you're praying for direction from God or asking for direction from God or God's leading you while you're fruitless. It's ridiculous. There's many times I'll direct someone to do something and they don't listen and they'll tell me I didn't hear from God to do that. And I'll be like, well, you don't hear from God at all. And they'll be like, well, yes I do, I hear from God. And then I'll say to them, well, if you hear from God, why don't you bear any good fruit? What, what is God telling you to bear no fruit? Is that what you're hearing from God? That doesn't make any sense, does it? Now, in my opinion, not in my opinion, but in reality, the men who should be most listened to are the men that bear good fruit. Okay? People try and give me advice, I don't take it. Alright? You know why I don't take it? Because they bear no good fruit and they're giving me advice. But if somebody else is bearing more good fruit than I am, or has bearing, been bearing good fruit for God, or even bears good fruit for God, even if it's not as much as I'm bearing or someone else is bearing, I'll listen to them because they're led by God. Now, if you're just a reprobate and you're claiming to be led by God, you're a liar. Because if you're led by God, then you're not listening. Because your life is in shambles. If you're led by God, your life isn't in shambles. Okay? Unless you're converting. If you're converting, if you're coming out of the world, then your life will be in shambles. But if you're claiming to be a walking Christian with Christ and you're a mess product and you don't have sound mind and you're bouncing from every man of God on the planet to another, then you're just lost. All right? People who need to seek help from a, a bunch of different men of God and they don't stick with just one, they are just browsing to hear what they want to hear to make them feel good that they want to do it. Now, They'll say to you, anything they want to do, they'll say to you that they hear that from God. Alright? I've gone into groups where everyone claims to hear from God. Everybody. Because they were taught to say that they hear from God. Yet they're, yet they're walking in continual sin, they're not even saved, and they're all going down to the pit. Now... God does not speak to the mind. A person that uses their mind too much cannot hear from God. You have to completely be led by the Spirit slash heart. God leads you in the Spirit in the heart. Very, very, very rarely will you get an audible voice. You should not be praying for an answer from God and listening for an answer with your head. You should be listening for an answer in the Spirit, in your heart. Now, when God does speak audibly, He speaks audibly to the heart, not the head. Okay? If, he's speaking, if you're hearing voices in your head, you got a bunch of demons. Alright? I've been praying with some people that have been talking to demons as if they were the Holy Ghost for years on end. And that is consulting with familiar spirits, guys. It's a major sin. If you're void of discernment, you better not be talking to voices. All right. Don't be don't be ignorant to your own lack of discernment. If you don't have strong discernment, don't walk around thinking you do. 
because you're going to get yourself into trouble. So, what I'm trying to say is, everyone needs to cut this foolishness out that they're led by God and that they hear from God. If you want to claim you're led by God, come up with a basket of good fruit and show me you're led by God. Don't, not, don't disobey and then call for help a day later. You see, it's reprobate to call a man for help and only take the advice you want because you're a time waster. If you call a man for help and a man of God gives you eight things to do and you do seven, expect trouble because you've left one thing out on the table. You're not going to get any better. You're not going to pick what you want. You're not going to call in and get advice. And a man of God tells you to read certain books in the Bible, turn from certain sins and fast a certain way, and you leave out the fasting, you will not get better. You see, God vindicates His prophets and His teachers and His evangelists. So, if a prophet gives you some advice and you disobey it, even if it wasn't the best advice, you're in trouble. Because if that man is truly a child of God, it is going to anger God that you didn't listen to him. Alright? You just better hope that the man of God you don't listen to is a fake. If the man of God you don't listen to is a fake, you'll be fine. You won't get wrath from God. But when you call a real man of God and you don't listen, expect problems. I had a girl call me today who didn't listen to me. She worked in a massage parlor, didn't listen to me. One week ago I told her not to go back one more time. She did not quit. She kept going back. She didn't listen to me. She called me today, a nice girl, I have nothing against her, I'm just telling this story. She called me today mad at me, saying, why did you pray? And I said, what do you mean? She said, I lost my job. They fired me. I didn't quit. They forced me out for no reason. She said, I know you prayed. I didn't pray. God ousted her because she didn't listen. She just didn't listen. So he te messed her life up. All right? He took her out. He forcefully made her listen. All right? And it was on his terms. Then he flooded her with demonic torment. She was in tears when she called me. I call you fucks. I'm a silly Disney right now. I'm crying. I'm getting angry. Alright, let me pray for you, alright? She was so delusional that when I said I would pray for her because she was being tormented, she said she didn't think it was a good idea. I had to tell her, shut up. You don't know what a good idea is. And just start praying. I don't think that's a good idea. You don't even know what a good idea is, sister. No offense. I don't think that's a good idea, not right now. Those are demons. You're guided by the devil. Let me just pray for you and try and loose you, because you're all messed up. Okay? Alright, just keep a clear mind. I'm going to start burning them. They'll start coming out. And then she hacked up demons for an hour straight from all the people that she was involved with in the massage parlor. <laughs> Keep burning the mouth, Father. Burn those devils out of her body in Jesus Christ's name. <laughs> Angel, start dropping hooks in her chest and her waist in Jesus' name. Water on you, demon. Torture it. Angels, rip it to pieces. Rip its legs off and tear it, tear it apart. Can you try this again on Skype? Yeah. You know, I don't ask for people's advice that I don't, I don't plan on listening to. That's pretty dumb. That is really dumb, guys. I don't even remember what this video was about. It's, it's very involved to understand how God talks to us. You guys need to realize, God 
everything that happens, you can't just say, well, that was God's will, or, you know, if God wanted that to, me to have that job, they wouldn't have fired me, or they wouldn't have, they wouldn't have told me I don't have the job. And then you never go back to try and fight for your job or try and keep your job. And you use the fact of circumstances as an excuse to be a lazy bum. Anything that comes and blocks your ministry, you say, well, that wasn't God's will, that wasn't God's will. Because you think that any little thing that happens is Him talking to you. Now, that's not how God talks. God talks in circumstances, but those are circumstances of the world. All right, you need to know the difference between a circumstance of the world and a circumstance that God is putting before you. Now, circumstances God puts before you is opening the pathways for you to do things. Things will seem easy when God is operating in the natural. However, God is watching to see how you deal with these worldly demonic circumstances, a.k.a. blockages. Now that's not him talking. Him talking is how you deal, is how the suggestion you get in your heart when these blockages come up, like say I'm making a video, I was explaining this to someone today, and the video gets uh, like deleted. I spend five hours making it, editing it, and some demon comes and has enough power to mess my computer, or God allows a demon to come and destroy my computer and shut, and shut it down and I lose the video. Do I then say it wasn't God's will for that video to go up and not do another one? No, I don't say that. I do another one. And if it, it, was, if it was God's will that the video doesn't go up, when the video gets knocked down, and I listen to my heart, I will say, it's not even worth making another one. But if the video gets knocked down and I feel in my heart like I have to make another one, like I let God down, I immediately make another one. So when did God talk to me? God talked to me in my heart after the demonic circumstance occurred. Okay? Now, now a demon can't operate with, in this realm without him letting something go on. So, if he knocked that thing off, it's a test. His voice in your heart is a suggestion. So really, God talks by suggestion in the heart. That's how he really talks. It's circumstance, but then his final opinion comes in your heart. Alright? The circumstance isn't always his desire. It's his desire that it happened, but it's not necessarily his desire that things stay that way. His real desire is that you overcome that thing. You see, this is so hard to understand, it's hard to explain. I'm trying to explain it the best I can, but you guys need to learn how to hear from God. You need to stop going to prayer and waiting for an audible voice from God. You need to stop going to prayer about specific things. Father, tell me which job I should take, this one, this one, or this one. You will never get an answer for that. You will have to try each one and see where the circumstances God lets you flow nice in that one. He doesn't talk like people want Him to talk. He talks like He talks. You see, the world today has made some stupid idea that you pray about every little thing you do. No, you don't do that. You don't pray about every little thing. When there's a big decision, you follow your heart, and then you go with your heart. Now, if you go with your heart and there's a blockage, it doesn't mean you just give up as long as your heart is telling you to keep going. You can use this situation almost anywhere. It's the same thing when you have a significant other, all right? When you're a Christian and you have a significant other, and um, say you want to marry someone, the devil is going to throw in front of you blockages, okay? Because the devil does not want holy unions going on. So, you may say to yourself, you may try to be with this person and nothing is working out. You can't get a hold of them, nothing's working, every time you make a date, one person cancels. 
um, whatever, then you just start to say to yourself, it's not God's will, right? And, and just because of the circumstances the devil caused or whatever, then you go to bed and your heart just tells you you want this person. It's not lust, it's not demonic, it's just a gentle nudging, a gentle healthy love to, from one godly person to another. That's God talking to you. The other things are the devil trashing the place. Now God may be letting you, God may be letting that happen, okay? And he's watching you to see if you're going to give up on something that he's pushing for. Because God will suggest a mate for a person. He won't force a mate on a person, but he will suggest one. And the more pleased he'll be to see those people together, the more that suggestion will become more of a push. You'll almost feel pushed that you want to be with somebody. But um, this, this is across the board everywhere, guys, with jobs, with decisions you make on how to deal with a brother. When, when you have an argument with a brother, and there, there's always fighting, right? That's the devil. Now, God may be letting that devil test your righteousness, test your discernment, now, if you leave a brother and you feel like you did wrong and you can't sleep because you have a debate with a brother, that's God speaking to you that you're wrong. If you're uncomfortable at night and you can't, and you feel like you need to repent and apologize to that brother, you're wrong. It's always the guy sleeping good and sleeping sound that's not wrong. I've had many debates with people and, you know, I like to think most of the time I'm right, or I would just be foolish to think I'm wrong most of the time. So when I'm right, I go home, and I just know I'm right. I know in my heart I'm right. I know that they behaved outside of God's will. And I go to bed that night, and I say, I hope they repent. If they don't, whatever. But when I'm wrong, I go home, and I can't sleep. I just have to, I stay up, I pray, I'm like, Lord... Did I make a mistake? I don't feel right. Something's wrong in my heart. And then the next day I have to call and apologize. I'm wrong. God answers questions, right? But he answers in the heart. Remember that. Don't be looking for audible voices. Don't be praying for specifics. God can only lead you and talk to you if you're already moving. You can't just sit there and pray for an answer. Do you understand? It's not possible. Did you ever try to lead a man that won't stand up? That's what most people want God to do. They refuse to stand up and they say, Lord, lead me. Lord, lead me. How's he going to lead you? You're not even walking yet. He would have to lift you up and teach you how to walk first to lead you. Be blessed in Jesus' name, and have a good night.